<laughs> I think more, more often Hi. than not, it's difficult to get so, into the job. So, no, so we're live. So this is Claudia Phylos. I'm with the Center for Hellenic Studies. And today I'm with, um, we're being visited by Ryan Fowler, uh, who is uh, a professor in the CHS Sinoikosis Fellow for Curricular Development. Is that correct, Ryan? Did I get that correct? Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, and Janet Oslak, who is a very active member of uh, the Hour 25 community. She was also a discussion facilitator in the second iteration of Heroes X. Uh, and so we're happy to have both of you. And we have some people who are going to be joining us today. This is our first uh, really live broadcast, and we're going to try and do a Q&A as well. So um, we're so excited to have you here today. Fun. Ryan, thanks. So Ryan, one of the things I wanted to ask you about was um, ways that the Hour 25 community might interact with the Heroes X community. Um, and with the here with the community that you're developing for your courses, um, and what you're teaching right now is it's a Sinoikosis course uh, that has integrated into it the content from Heroes X. So can you talk just a little bit first about what Sinoikosis is, and then maybe yeah. we could talk a bit about the communities. Yeah, Sinoikosis. Well, Sinoikosis in general uh, is a is an initiative that was developed um, about 20 years started about 20 years ago. It started really um, offering courses about 15 years ago, but the idea behind the Sinoikosis initiative is um, really one of collaboration. Um, where and it's really um, a kind of a kind of version of the kind of collaboration that Heroes X goes after as well. In a way, um, the idea it's a little bit different in that the idea is to take or to connect. Um, various professors, disparate professors from all over the United States, um, wherever, um, who are alone in their departments or say um, there's just a few of them and they're under-resourced and usually underappreciated and um, under-supported and various other, sundry other things. And um, first, to the, the originally the idea is to bring them together to collectively and collaboratively um, create a syllabus that they can teach together that fall term, that next fall term, um, and the idea is to share really the kind of burden of teaching. So not just the the burden of creating the the, the syllabus where you can bring in different ideas from different professors and really also talk about the trajectory of a course. You know, really have the whole course from beginning to end, from start to finish have a, an arc to it, a narrative arc to it. Um, and to do that where, so that the professors are dealing with and, and, and learning from and, and instructing their own students on the ground, but where we can all come together once or twice a week, virtually, through technology, and um, come up with different perspectives. Because students don't usually see one other professor in the room, nevertheless, 10 or 12 all chatting together at the same time. In a, so we have a sort of, we have faculty members creating a, a community of faculty members. We have students seeing the work of other students from other institutions, which they very rarely do, unless they take a course in another institution, but it's, it's rather rare. But also to see uh, professors interacting in a room together, in a chat room together, or online, or in the same virtual room. They, are barely, they usually don't see that either. Um, and then those professors, all those different professors interacting with the different iterations of students. So really it's multi-level interaction across institutions where you can gain perspectives both from the instructor point of view um, of um, creating writing assignments together, right? So we can um, really it's a chance to sort of hone our craft as professors, as instructors, as well as allowing for different perspectives to be seen by different, different, different groups. So the idea behind um, the Sunaikis' Iliad course, in particular, <laughs> is to create a model where, um, in, in the spring, where we can get four, well, this, in this particular iteration, four institutions who are um, of, of, of people who are alone in their institutions or, or wouldn't normally be able to offer a course like this and really take one text 
read it slowly and carefully, really practice the art of reading the way that Professor Nash does in his course. He really emphasizes right, the Nietzschean quote, really careful, right, careful fingers and eyes and looking mm -hmm. backward and at, aft and, um, and forward and, um, and, really, and really taking that to heart. So two books a week over 12 weeks. We are reading, um, we are sharing content questions from Heroes X that we're putting out. We are um, showing, we are um, um, posting videos from particular videos and honed videos as the, we go through the different books because we're doing something different, right? We're going sequentially. Books one and two, books three and four, books five and six. And that's different from what Professor Nash does. He, as it were, has this narrative arc that is semi-linear but not entirely. And so, and what's amazing, what's come out of this, I've found, is that from the professor's point of view, they've all said, this is an amazing opportunity to read uh, one text slowly. Because very often, I'll give you an example, one of our professors is reading the abridged version of the Iliad in a week and a half. We are taking 12 weeks to, to, go, to go so slowly, to, to get, allow the opportunity to read twice, to read, as Professor Naj has them do, quickly and slowly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and this has changed everyone's experience, both professors who have all read the Iliad 40, 50 times, or what have you, and the students as well. It doesn't make any difference. It's, it's completely changed all of our perspectives on, um, on this work. Um, and so what we're doing is we all have our meetings with our respective institutions, but we come together every Monday night, all, if we're lucky, 118 of us there are in the class. Um, and we have students lead uh, presentations of, and wh what we have them do is, well, I mean, this is something we can get into, the logistics of having a, a, a high-touch liberal arts approach to Heroes X was with 100, over 100 people was daunting. And we had to come up with a new kind of, for me anyway, a new kind of class structure that allowed for institutional identity to remain intact, mm -hmm. course in identity to be developed, but also some smaller circles of identity that allowed them to have a smaller group of people they could sort of, that's interinstitutional so they could have a, as it were, what we developed were, were working groups that were that were from Sweetbriar and from Howard and from University of Southern Maine, but a way where they get those different perspectives. But we have um, nested identities that are not mutually exclusive, and it became it became a sort of logistical challenge, if not nightmare. Um, but I think we have it. I think we have something that actually seems to be working with this number of people. So what we do is we have students present every Monday. We all get together, all four professors in the room in the hangout. And then we have students in the room from various places. And we discuss the most recent two books of the Iliad. So that's the idea is to, to have a model where we could do, say, the Odyssey next spring, Greek tragedy the spring after that, right? Greek lyric. So the and to continue to pull resources and information and narrative um, information from, from um, Heroes X, but also go beyond it. Because, of course, as, as Greg has mentioned, he doesn't, he doesn't touch on every book equally. Right? Mm -hmm. There are certain books that fit, that work with his narrative, that work with what he's want, he wants to say, right? Book 1, Book 24. Um, what we're trying to do is, as as um, as um, nauseans is to fill in some gaps about some of the some of the books that aren't as as heavily or as thoroughly um, developed, but in the vein in the spirit of what Professor Nash has done with with Heroes X. So that's yeah. that was a lot. No, that was beautiful. <laughs> that was a lot. Uh, yeah. So, Janet, do you have any questions about that? Yeah. Your uh, course is all called Heroes? Well, we, that was the nickname for it. it it's really called Sinoikosis Iliad. 
And um, what, the reason we did that is um, we, we took sort of Sinorchus' heroes and made it Shiro's, but the idea was to pull away from heroes, even though most of our courses are called the Greek hero or what have you, and plug in the Iliad, because that's really what the focus of the course is, so that we can have Sinoikis' Odyssey, Sinoikis' Tragedy, Sinoikis' Lyric. And so um, that, was, that was the sort of nickname that I gave it um, uh, that was not, uh, wasn't appreciated by all, <laughs> by all, by all the corners. Of, of of the initiative, but um, but yeah, originally that was the that, that, yeah that was a good word. So you know, I think one thing that's so interesting is a way um, that you're using content from Heroes X as part of these hybrid course, the, right. like part of the hybrid course that you're teaching. And I was wondering if you could just talk a little bit about that distinction because I know that's something that Professor not Professor Naj, um it was very um, as the first iteration of Heroes went on, he was very, uh, that became very important to him, the fact that Heroes X was content, right? And now he started to talk about Heroes X as content, conversation, and community. So those three C's, right? And so the C in MOOC for him uh, was content, and now Absolutely. it's content, conversation, community. And I feel like you are really making the most of that in, in your project. Absolutely. Abs I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more with, with his distinction. Um, and we, you know, it's very interesting. I mean, we just see absolutely eye to eye on this. That um, as I, as I've watched the development of MOOCs over the last really, you know, two and a half years, three years, and the sort of rise and plateauing, maybe fall of them, it became really clear um, to me. And 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 the more we discussed it, the more it, it, I realized he 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 thought something very similar. That um, the way that MOOCs were developing were as multimedia textbooks. That they were really um, textbooks with video and pictures and, 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 and also text and, and that textbooks really are content. They're not courses. T no, right, textbooks didn't put professors out of business any more than MOOCs really should or will, it seems to me. Libraries didn't put anybody out of business. So anyone's, anyone can go to a library and read a textbook. Um, anyone can, in the same vein, watch what would normally be a MOOC or what have you, and it doesn't mean that you've really done, really traveled a course, if you want to take it from a literal point of view. You haven't made the turn around the running post and made it back to, you know, some other place that's similar to where you started. Um, and that's fine, because textbooks are great. I think source books and readers and textbooks are wonderful. I... I use them, we all use them. They're not, there's nothing wrong with them at all. But I think it's really important not to imagine that that's going to be something you can just hand someone and say, okay, well now you have some sort of mastery, any more than you can hand them an organic chemistry textbook and say, okay, well now that you've read that, everything, <laughs> you know, go ahead and operate or whatever. Um, right, that's not, so what and this was enormously generous of Professor Naj and 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 Professor Mueller and and all of the whole all of you and for that matter, is is to allow us the opportunity to really um, selectively pick and choose these moments that really speak to particular issues or particular moments in the Iliad, um, but it really does show that. Um, there's, there are many ways that this content can be used. It can be done through a Heroes X, the linearity of Heroes X, which is its own linearity, really, but also can be done sequentially if you pull them out. And what I've had to do, what I've, what I've, um, the task I've taken on, is to go through um, the Greek Hero in 24 Hours and the videos and to um, selectively choose the videos for each week that speak to that particular book. So I can show you, if you like. Yes, we'd love to see. On um, um, if if um, you will give me a second, I will. There it is. Okay. Screen share. That'd be great. Um, yeah, screen share is uh, can say more about it than I can. So can you see that? Yes. And maybe yes. Can you, can you click on it so that it becomes the big? Yep. Just so people who are watching can. 
Okay, so I'll just take you Wait, through Ryan, it. Ryan, before you come into it, can I just make one comment? Yes. So th this is our first time using a Q&A that we attempted it, and um, it turns out that that feature had to be turned on before we began the broadcast, which is something I didn't realize. So if you're trying to do the Q&A or waiting, I'm so sorry that you can't access that. So, do you want to start over? Uh, we can't because we've embedded oh. this video in a few places, actually, okay. and that's where people will be watching. Right. Well, so that didn't go... Yeah, so I'm so sorry about that. Maybe they can email. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right? Why not? Why can't we just have them email your one of your Okay. Your, All right, um, they can just email. Yeah, yeah. Email, email one of us. I'm okay. I have a Gmail account. We all have Gmail accounts, right? So we can So hopefully we'll get something. Okay. That would be fun. Um, so this is this is the WordPress site that we that Ali and and Lana and the people at the center actually and and Mills yeah. Mills yep. MacArthur everybody um, created for this course. So the next version will be Synoicus's Odyssey, right? Yes. And it will be exact, the, exactly this same for, um, format. And of course, you can see that we have um, Professor Naj's, one of Professor Naj's yeah. um, favorite quotes from, from um, Frederick Nietzsche. So, Which really well, sets a tone for everything, right? I mean, that is so telling that that's right there on that front, right? Front page. I wanted it right, uh, right as soon as you see it. What this is, this is about, right? reading, practicing reading. So what we've done, and I can give you uh, a little bit of an, an example of how complicated the, so this is what we've done. I put together on interinstitutional, um, now we've done this by group this way first, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. this, these groups are interinstitutional. So you, University of Southern Maine, Sweetbriar, Elon, Howard. And then what I've done is I've, I've created um, Greek um, letter um, um, prompts or group mm -hmm. categorizations as well. What happens is this, so Aeneas is a working group and it's interinstitutional. And Andromache is, an, is interinstitutional working group and Briseis, Domides, right? So these are all groups that um, all work together each week. And the way that they know how to work together is if you look at the the assignment prompt for the first week, right? What we've shown is that the initial the people who are to initially post are the alphas. So the first Greek letter all the way across all the working groups are to initially post. Mm -hmm. And what what they do is they go to Aeneas, let's say, and they see the writing prompt, right? Mm -hmm. And then this is our alpha. This is our alpha. Alpha has come through and said, "This is my answer to the question." And then all of the Aeneid, Aeneas people come through and nest all of their responses, responding to one another. So that's the group, wor the working group identity that I was talking about before. Mm -hmm. And this way, they have a long conversation, long conversation, sometimes thirty-two. Um, and there are 12 Greek letters because we have 12 weeks in the course. We want everyone to respond initially once, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and then by the time they get to the end, what we hope is that they've come up with their working group's answer. And then in the Hangout, we want a working group to come in and say, this is how our thread, our conversation developed. And then all other the, all the other working groups gets to, they get to see how one working group has done it, and they get to differentiate and sort of compare and contrast how their working group um, mm. has worked. But I, what I wanted to show you most of all was that you can see the hours that we've embedded, and I have a little for some of them I have a little narrative. Yep. But our zero video three, and then our fourteen text D, and our fourteen mm -hmm. text O, because these go back to book one, as it mm -hmm. were, right? So what we've done is we've created a different type of sense of linearity of what linear means. Mm. Um, we've created a different a different sense um, of so you can take the Heroes X course, which I did, which I did myself um, twice. Yes. And you can get a sense of linearity that way. And then what we've tried to do is say, well, there's a different kind of linearity, and it's really a, a sequential linearity, but you can still gain over time 
the arc of Professor Naja's narrative, mm. right? By the time we get to 24, we will have, we want, we'll have wanted students to get to the same place as Heroes X or a similar place, a different, you know, it's not, not exactly sure, the same. Sure, sure. Similar place, but having gone through the books um, 1 through 24 in that order. And that's the idea. That's the idea. Mm. But to do so also so that there's this, again, a feeling of high touch where we're really, all of the professors, um, different professors lead different weeks' discussions. And what that professor has done is read all of the comments. All, and usually it's about, let's say, it's on average about 100 and could be around 150, 200 comments. But that professor mm -hmm. reads all of them and picks out maybe in a, in a PowerPoint, uh, Sarah at Elon said X, right? And that mm -hmm. really, Sarah, are you out there now in the chat room? Can you tell me a little bit about how you came up with that idea? For example, we had a student in the Hangout who was giving her, she was presenting her group's um, thread, and uh, someone in the chat room said, you know, it just struck me that perhaps the Iliad is one long lament with micro laments wrapped up or carried within it, enveloped mm. within it. And that was a sort of mind-blowing moment for a lot of the students in the class at the same time. This is the lament for Achilles in which uh, Andromache's lament is contained and in which Helen's lament is contained and that sort of thing. And, and, and for some of the students in the class, it was just sort of a, it was a, it was a, just a moment, right? It was really... Um, and that's why synchronicity matters. That's why we feel that the idea of having everybody together at least once a week, the opportunity to have that moment of synchronicity where we can see connections being made, sparks being um, flashed, um, can make a difference. And, and both experiences matter so significantly. I mean, both the Heroes X and Sunoikis' Iliad, both these experiences can matter, but they can, they, what, what, can, what can happen is they can both bring different, uh, epiphany is the wrong word, Professor Naj would not appreciate that use of epiphany, um, illuminations, moments of illumination, but in different ways because they're different medias, right, mediums, they're, 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 they are different, they are different media. Um, they, they can allow for different moments to happen for, under different circumstances because they are different approaches and different linearities. That's the idea. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, I feel like um, what you're doing by bringing everyone together and being so careful about putting the effort into these uh, cross-institutional uh, micro-communities yeah. really, um, really makes such a huge difference, right? And then so you're not just making sure that people are coming together in time, you're making sure they're coming together across space too. That's right. We want to erase we want to erase the distance between the institutions. So somehow it's really I feel like it's really overcoming some of the um, some of the negatives of a typical MOOC, right? Which is that you, yes. you don't have the support, you don't feel connected, you just feel um, like you're off on your own doing your own thing That's and you right. don't have those moments of interaction and spark that really advance forward your own thinking. Well, it's really, it's, the, it's the, those moments that other people can bring you that you, we all know what we think. Actually, we don't. We don't all know what we think, but we all think we know what we think. <laughs> and it's sometimes it, it's somebody else saying, you know, what about this? That allows us to think, wow, that is what I think, or that isn't what I think, or it makes, it forces us, it causes us. It allows us the opportunity to um, articulate what we already think, or to perhaps change what we already think. I mean, both of those things are absolutely essential. So, so the um, so this is our answer. Really, this is our answer to the MOOC. This is an attempt to answer the MOOC and say um, what the internet is is not. Um, it 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 is it is both content delivery. It is not a course. It is both content delivery, it's a medium for content delivery, but it is also a chance for connectivity. And mm -hmm. that's what we think this 
this um, this course allows for is the erasure of so and uh, the erasure and recreation of identities of what we, we want to challenge what a sort of identity is and what's amazing I loved this moment it was two weeks ago we had three Elon students in the room in uh, in, a, in a classroom and they were being projected I think one of them said hi this is Michelle I'm from Hecabe and it wasn't Elon right it wasn't her identity, her initial, her primary identity for that moment was her working group. <laughs> it could be working group. And that to me was a, an amazing moment because she's, her, her primary identity has shifted at least in that, in that instance. That was a, that was, that made the whole experiment worthwhile to say, you know, I'm from Hecabee. Um, so, so you know, it's it's proving to be challenging. It's not all working. You know, we have some work ahead of us. <laughs> it's sure, sure. Not, not not all the professors would say this has been smooth sailing, but that some of those moments, those sort of <laughs> moments when people are listening to each other or reading each other's comments, but also when the feedback um, comes in, which says, you know, I didn't think that the the working groups, the forums, were going to work. But what I realized was that I learned from watching other people struggle with the question and with my with my comments and asking me questions and that sort of thing. So those moments are making it all for me are making it all worthwhile. But I might I don't hopefully I'm not in the minority. But mm -hmm. yeah, but we but so so really we are to answer your question to go back to your question we really are trying to. Um, pull out discrete pockets, packets of information from the Heroes X course. So um, pages of the Greek hero in 24 hours, right, just individual pages, sections, close readings, um, exegeses, um, but also um, seven minute moments of video, mm -hmm. right, that the the particular close reading of a particular text that they can stand on their own and be, can be illustrative on their own. They don't need to be embedded within the greater or larger course. They can be watched and have impact as a discrete um, pocket of information. A little, a little expert Khan Academy lecture, a little discussion, a little discussion between Greg and and you and. And, and Lenny that can um, stand on its own mm -hmm. and that to me was I was curious to see if that was going to be the case and it, it, it absolutely is these these little these little moments stand on their own you don't need all of them together to sort of um, to, to, to get what's being suggested so can I ask do you feel like part of that is the way that um, the poetic language and system of the Iliad and Odyssey work, which is that like they're all all these themes, all these moments. Like you could pick any line or any passage um, and track a theme in different directions throughout the Iliad, right? If you choose one word and if you choose a different word to focus on, you could track it in a different. Absolutely. See what I mean? Absolutely. And Absolutely. so when you were talking about that, yeah, the the different ways of achieving linearity. Um, I was sort of thinking about that. I think there's something very special about our content that is conducive to this approach. It's it's totally it's absolutely true. I mean if you right this is what 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 becomes clear to all of us, I think, is that the that Heroes X is one narrative, one has one narrative arc that actually should immediately separate it from all other MOOCs, however you define it. That's mm -hmm. totally different. I mean, what Professor Naj has done there, that kind of connectivity and linearity of, of a narrative arc of, of his course should separate it from anything else I've seen in edX, quite frankly, or Harvard X for that matter. But, mm -hmm. but in addition, yes, I mean, if, he, if we sat down and talked with Professor Naj about and focused on let's say decision making and leadership in the Iliad it would be we could have a hero's X linear we could have a, narr a narrative there that that tells a story 
But um, for example, we have a we have a segment, and this is this is Professor uh, Sandridge's um, K Pasa Agamemnon, right? <laughs> every 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 Monday he has a segment. What's up with Agamemnon? K Pasa, and he actually has a slide that say cut kids that says K Pasa Agamemnon, but that could be its own sort of mini. X, right? Um, mm -hmm. Leadership mm -hmm. X, or what have you. And of course, this is something important to to Norman. But it's it, it's it's it allows us I mean, exactly that, right? You could just pick up on um, you could pick up on Agamemnon's decision making or leadership or what have you, and have a have a different and just sort of spin out from there, right? Mm -hmm. So it, we could all create, I think, these. If at some point we all create these these little mini Khan Academy seven or ten minute discussions, I mean, we could do this with Professor Naj and you and I right now, right? We could all sit down and talk about um, different lines in seven or ten minute increments about Agamemnon's leadership skills or however you want to look at it mm -hmm. approach and. Plug those into Sinaiticus Iliad, but also have, right, Agamemnon X or what have you, where mm -hmm. it's it, so it's it's true. But I, you know, I would like to think that Plato is also possible to do this with. That you could look at, you could look at um, the role of uh, human law and natural law in Plato and spin that into do different ways as well that this I think ancient content in general actually lends itself to the kind of richness that makes it hyper textual mm -hmm. where you click on a word and it spins you out in different directions but I think Sappho and I mean it could be my just my bias but the Odyssey will do this but so will the Oristia, frankly. I mean, I think you can really look at, you know, fate and the gods. You could also look at human decision in, the, in Greek tragedy. There's so, it's so rich that, um, but yes, the Iliad is, is a great text to start with. Because it is, <laughs> you can, we could, we, we will want to do the Iliad again in four years, and I promise you, with four different personalities in the room, it will take, a totally different. Um, there will be a totally different course, and that will be a kind of course, right? I mean, that will, because we make sure that we are connecting the synchronicity, but also feedback. I think the feedback, the feedback is what is really being able to 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 embed someone's comment in a slide and say, "This to me was where your working group is going." When, when Muhammad said X at the end of that thread, that really in, encapsulated all of your where you were all going in this writing prompt this week, right? That moment, I think, matters um, for students and for people. And and uh, I don't know what we would do if we got to 500 students or a thousand students, but. Um, and so it's really, you know, it has to be, the MOOC has shifted, it can't be massive if we are going to have feedback, it's got to be small, and it can't be open, it's got to be restricted, you know, it's got to be R instead of O, because you've got to, when you're creating a community, you've got, you can't be anonymous, you mm -hmm. can't be unaccountable, and you can't, you've got to be transparent, because otherwise, anything goes, but also, we're trying to get people to know each other across institutions. They've got there's got to be a name and as often as possible a face with that where you say, Wow, you know, and one of the things where we've been failing, I think, where we have not succeeded, is the students are getting to know the four professors really well. They know Norman, they have a little narrative about Norman, they have a narrative about Ryan, you know, they have a narrative about Christina, they have a sense of where we are in relation to age with each other and all this, we need to get more students into those hangouts and we need to do it earlier so that they start seeing each other and right. not us. And that's where, that's the next iteration straight from the get-go. We've got to have 
them looking at each other. So that's interesting. I mean, one of the things that we've really been focusing on with Hour 25 is creating that sense of community yeah. and creating spaces where people can get to know each other. And so it makes so. me wonder if there are ways to um, to support those efforts, you know, across both communities in terms of, um, you know, extra hangouts, um, things, live chats, right? Um, the kind of things, yeah. The um, what's clear to us, it's the same situation, and actually, um, it's 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 um, a shame that Jenna had to go, but maybe she'll come back. Yeah, exactly. But, In fact, she wrote a note and said she has to step up, but she'll be right back. Yeah, sure. that that um, it, it was the same situation with the Greek 101, the virtual, the sort of inter-institutional Greek 101 that Professor Morell is teaching that Janet has been following, right? Mm -hmm. What we realized there and what we realized here is that um, it's it's what you do Initially, it's the what do you how do you set the tone the very first class and we had a hangout a sort of te technological hangout where we got together and I was explaining the course and we were all sort of talking and that set the tone they're the professors okay that's what's going to happen what we should have done immediately from the get go is had faces in the you know filled up we should we need to fill up all of those little Google Hangout windows. Yeah. We have 10 windows of student faces, and we pull back. We pull ourselves back, and we see students matter. Students are the emphasis, and you need to start thinking about, you know, this is a face to the name, and, and what you do right away, I think, really sets the tone. And so, so I think what it, what it has to do with is filling up all of those little windows with each other's faces. Mm -hmm. And not having one person and having everybody watch that passivity, because that's not that's that's the setting the wrong message, I think, having and because it also indicates this is democracy and this is a sort of sharing. We're sh we're sharing with each other. We are not it's not a leader per se over it's the wrong it's anyway, it's the wrong model. So I agree with you. I think I think creating and reinforcing that feeling of connectivity, but also of input from all corners of of, of our 25, right? Of making sure that everyone, and having it whether it's rot rotating or whatever it is, but getting everybody's face up there, we're realizing is what is what really matters. And I think um, I can tell you from from our students' perspective, I think what would be fascinating is to get our 25 people together and the students from this class together because of the difference of approach exactly mm -hmm. because of that so they could share what it's like to read all of them from beginning to end and watch the videos discreetly mm -hmm. out of as it were context out of hour out of the particular hour and then have the hour 25 people s discuss their experience with the narrative arc as a narrative arc and I, I, what I would love to do is get them all in a chat room together, the Sakai chat room or whatever it is, and get some representatives, you know, five from, from Hour 25 and five from Sunoikis' Iliad, and have them just, as it were, go. Just no, have them thing. discuss. Because I think the perspectives that each of them would bring together, one... The, the sequentiality, the, se the sequence of the books, the other, the experience, the Naj experience, what I started to call the Naj experience, um, um, and, the, and the different ways that that shapes your experience with the text, I think would be absolutely fascinating. I would watch that in a heartbeat, and to have maybe two or three of those, where because, you know... The first pancake's always for the pan. Yes. So. Well, unfortunately, yes. Like our Q and A session today, I'm the so sorry. First. It's it's amazing that we're talking about this because our goal today was actually to try and get more faces in, and yeah. it didn't work today. But we're gonna get there because first that's a huge priority for us. That's right. But the second pancake is like the perfect pancake, right? And then by the time you get to the end, it's like the the platonic uh, ideal of the pancake or what have you. So uh, so. But to do that, to do that two or three times and have them discuss the differences between, and maybe just give them 
a, a, a topic. Like, let's talk about hero cult. Something that really is so strong in Heroes X, the mm -hmm. lament, the hero cult, something that really comes through, the ideal bridegroom, whatever it is, something that they can share but have different perspectives about at the by the end of the of of so after the twelve weeks of this course and then to have the hour twenty five come back together and in the in the thirteenth week of this course or the fourteenth week of this course once they've finished you know whatever their first iteration the first the first because uh, you're sequence. never done you're never done with the never done of never done the now. conversation has to we we owe it to Professor Naj to keep the conversation going and to not stop right the logos must continue mm -hmm. um, but to do that in the thirteenth or the fourteenth week would be uh, and I would consider it uh, actually a, a help because what it would allow me to see is where we've done a good job emphasizing certain things in the Sunoica Siciliad and where we could have done a better job. I just think I just think bringing all of those all of those and the, and the Heroes X people I think would feel the opportunity to kind of prompt and and not necessarily teach but sort of draw information or or remind people of certain moments of information. And I think on from their perspective it would be if I were they um, it'd be a nice chance to say okay Starting from that position, what about this next move? What about this next point? What about, you know, someplace where you didn't get in Sunoica Siciliad, but where it might inform or shape or um, um, aid uh, your reading, right? And, uh, supplement, complement your reading um, from Sunoica Siciliad. Because I think they're in a position to do that. Having gone through that narrative of Professor Naj's uh, course, um, they're in a position to connect disparate pieces of, of what might feel like loosely connected or loosely linked or disparate pieces of information for our approach. They're in a position to help connect an overarching narrative for our course that would be I think priceless for their experience of this course because once they've read the Iliad, um, if they're not going to do Heroes X to get the benefit of that kind of okay, you talked about A, you talked about you know D. Let's one way to connect those two is by the idea of say the hero cult or whatever it is. I think it would. I think they would. Uh, I think they would appreciate it. Frankly, mm -hmm. it would be extraordinary. And also, you know, the Hour 25 community can be open to all the students from your course when they are done as a way if they want to continue their reading to go through the other content um, however they feel fit uh, to do so, whether they want to go through hour by hour or if they want to right, right, um, just, right. you know, look at the Odyssey or just tragedy. Right. Um, it's a very modular approach, open-ended, and we have other really exciting um, projects that we're working on. We're working to heroize. Heroize other texts. Oh, is, Heroize. Oh, I like it. So we have a, um, a team that's led by uh, one person in particular uh, who's doing a fantastic job, um, who is working on the Antigone um, to oh. Heroize that. And then we have a team that's starting to create sort of a, a first steps in digital philology module. Uh, and part of that, the first part of that would be to guide people to use tools like Perseus to go beyond a translation, and this would be based uh, in a large part on things that are happening at Tufts. Um, Professor Crane's course on Greek literature and translation and uh, assignments that they're doing there. Oh, uh, sure. and, then, uh, and then some other sort of more technical uh, skills that people can develop in order to even go on to contribute to the research um, on these texts. So. That is fantastic. And because they're modular, people can sort of pick and choose. I mean, we're almost taking that kind of, we're taking, we're actually pulling the modules apart in our course and putting it, making our own modules of, say, two books at a time, but then to have them sort of re, um, uh, reattached, like uh, Orpheus's uh, 
Orpheus's body to sort of, you know, take all the limbs and put them back together in a way that they hadn't seen before, I think would be would benefit everyone. So I think uh, that is um, a wonderful idea, and I think that is something we should set up. And intentionally, sort of, a Heroes X, a, a, an hour 25 slash Shinoikis' Iliad hangout, uh, chat session moment, just to see, I mean, just as an experiment to see what it would be like to bring all these people together. I, mm -hmm. I, it would be... I think everyone would get something out of something. I know that I would, for sure. Do you do you need to wait until the twelfth week? Uh, maybe we can do something sooner than that. Well, I feel like I, you know, I don't know. I mean, that would be it's certainly one way to do it. I feel like, though, um, with Heroes X people having gone through the entire narrative all the way through from beginning to end. There, there would be, there could be a potential for frustration on both sides because, well, okay, you haven't gotten to eighteen, book eighteen yet, but when you do, right, and then they haven't, and then they, they think, well, I don't have all the pieces yet. I feel like, I think, like, I think that the students in our class don't feel. I mean, that's why we don't just let them go. Uh, let them, let them just take Heroes X. Is that they really do need all the pieces or all of the pieces in a, in, in a particular order in order to have a particular type of conversation. Mm -hmm. And I, I think they would be frustrated. They'd say, uh, I haven't gotten there yet, but I, you know, I will soon. And it's interesting. It's certainly, um, it's certainly an idea. I'm, I'm, I would be, I would be curious to see, I think I would only want to do that if the Heroes X people had only gone through the same number of weeks of their course. <laughs> so that everybody's on this sort of same... Because I feel like you, you have such a narrative arc, you have such a, a level of connectivity after Heroes X that you're operating on, a, on a, really, a really relatively high level with the text, right? And that we're going through sequentially um, to bring them in after um, only... Um, uh, ten or eleven scrolls would 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 they would feel like we brought them in with one hand tied behind their backs. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's an interesting idea. I mean, I'm always up for everything, but I'm I am also cognizant of the fact that we are um, uh, we don't want them to read into the text. <laughs> we want to make sure that they have read all the text so they could read out of it. Um, and to do that, I think we, it feels like we need to get them to week, week 12. But, you know, I, it's a really interesting idea. I don't know. All right. And all of your students are taking Greek, or only some of them are taking Greek? Uh, none of them have taken Greek. None of them that I know of have taken Greek. Some of them are taking Latin, but you mean that this is Professor Morell's class? Um, no, your in your from your class. Sonoikis is Iliad. Yeah, from Sonoikis is Iliad. I don't know any of them. Um, um, I don't know if any of them are taking or have taken Greek at all. And so what we're doing is we're introducing transliterated. Um, the men and the menace and the um, we're doing the same we're, when we bring it in when Professor Naj brings it in he's, we bring it in in the same kind of way which is transliterated and sort of bracketed so that they see repetitions of vocabulary and that sort of thing so we rely on no Greek at all zero Greek um, and we really are kind of de-emphasizing the Greek in a lot of ways because um, we have people for whom this is their very first experience with any, not just poetry, but ancient literature at all. I mean, we have freshmen. In, we have, in one institution, we have 15 freshmen, and that's the entire class. And so we're really, we really want to make sure that it feels very open and not, so it has to be done, as Professor Naj, do, do, Naj does it, very gently and very sort of slowly and in the spirit of kind of, a tool that we so we are bringing it in. We are bringing it. In. They know that um, there are different kinds of anger, for example, 
and that um, and we're trying to we're trying to bring it in in the same kind of way, but no, yeah, no reliance on Greek, um, on Greek, on Greek at all. So. Well, Ryan, you know, I know it's um, it's time it, we reached the, the telos of our time together today, and it's been so fabulous. I would love to talk more and more, but uh, maybe we can have you back for another visit in the future, and we can arrange maybe this uh, joint hangout that we've been discussing. I'd love to. I'd love to. And if you want, I could bring uh, one of the other professors from Sinaiticus Iliad, or one or two of the students. Now, I've yeah, never, so I've, I've never met um, in person any of my University of Southern Maine students. Some of them took a course with me last year on the idea, the sort of, the development of God in ancient literature, and they're repeating uh, a course with me. You know, God bless them. So to speak, but uh, that they that they've come back for more. But um, some of them I know would be interested in um, in continuing the conversation with our twenty five and to take the Heroes X course. They've now gotten a taste of how much fun, how interesting it is, how engaging it is to watch Professor Naj, and they are going to, I think, take the course. Um, but it might be interesting to bring them in and have them describe their experience, his or her experience, with uh, Sonoka Sicilia. Yes, um, that's so fascinating. Maybe that's exactly what we should do. It should be all about people just talking about their experience. Question and answer with the student. And yeah. some of them are, are um, I'd love, I mean, the more I, the more I get to see them in the hangout, the better, because I, I don't ever have a class with them. It's all virtual, 100%. So. Um, yeah, that would be, uh, be lovely. It would be fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much. And Janet, thank you so much for joining us today. And then once again, I'm sorry to everyone who couldn't join us, but uh, next time we next will time. get more faces in there. Nice so, to see you, Janet. Yeah. See you. It's fantastic. Yes. And Claudia always. It's, uh, yes, right. And you know Janet because uh, she was very active on the she, discussion board. Right? She was very act. Not She's only amazing. very active, but she also was uh, emailing us and watching us from afar on uh, Professor Morell's Greek 101 course virtually, which is yeah, she's which was an enormous treat. That was wonderful. Thank you. We'll All have right. to talk. Well, I, we need to talk more about the approach and the, the Greek class, Janet, you and me. Thank uh, you. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Sure. I would, I would really enjoy that. It would be, it would be a, a, a benefit to our, to our, our, our side as well. So, very good. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Good afternoon, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye.